Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and this certainly fits in with my Ancient America series, because this is about as ancient as it gets. We are flying into what is called the Galt Archaeological Site, and this is located north of Austin and south of Colleen, Texas. But on Google Earth here, you can just see some traces of an archaeological dig, and what they found here, uh, it really is pretty incredible as far as the dating and how far back the site goes. But there has been evidence of earlier habitation in these mound builder sites. But this place, well, this place goes back to the end of the Ice Age and maybe further. And I'm going to share some clips from a 20 minute video and I will leave that link to that video below. And I found it to be highly informative and what they found here I thought was pretty incredible. But let's just learn a little bit about this Galt archaeological site. This is Texas Beyond History, and I will leave the link below. But here is work that has gone on here. And this has been pretty much all privately funded. Of course, it says the Galt site, midway between Georgetown and Fort Hood, and those are some smaller towns that it is located by, has a long history of archaeological investigation as well as uncontrolled artifact digging. And this was a pay-to-dig site maybe about uh, 80, 90 years ago. It says, located in a small wooded valley with a spring-fed creek and an unlimited supply of excellent flint, the site was occupied intensively during all major periods of the prehistoric era. James E. Pierce, the first professional archaeologist in Texas, learned of the Galt Farm site and excavated there in the 1929-1930 to era. Over the next 60 years, artifact collectors churned up the upper deposits over almost the entire site, but stopped digging when the dark, rich midden soil played out. In 1990, an artifact collector dug deeper and found Clovis artifacts along with several unusual incised stones, something never before found with the Clovis material. And these were actually little round beads that had inscriptions on them, and they will talk a little bit more about that in that video clip. Learning of the find, Drs. Thomas R. Hester and Michael B. Collins of the Texas Archaeological Research Laboratory carried out testing at Galt in 1991, just enough to confirm the collector's story, but the property owner at the time continued to let pay-to-dig artifact collectors destroy the site. It says, fortunately for archaeology, the property changed hands and the owners recognized the scientific importance of the site. Since 1998, a major excavation project has been underway at Galt, led by Collins. It says, the Galt site is attracting national and international attention because of the wealth of new information on Clovis culture that is emerging from right here in the heart of Texas. And I will leave this link below, but it gives a few pics and some a few artifacts that were found here. But getting on to that video clip, let's just listen to a little introduction of the site coming from the people who are working there. And I will leave the full 19 plus minute video clip, that link below. My name is Steve Howard. Uh, I'm the field director here at the Galt site. Originally, the Galt site was a, a looters uh, area. I believe it was the 1920s uh, when they first started doing it. But one of the uh, early owners decided to, to uh, capitalize on that and turn it into a pay to dig operation. So it was a pay-to-dig operation for quite some time. So it's been known to have been productive uh, for them for quite a long time. Uh, and it was known to have Clovis points and things like that that came out of it, which are uh, some of the oldest points in North America. I believe it changed hands at some point, either the 80s or the 90s, and, and the, the new owners had stopped the pay-to-dig operation. Um, but they continued to do a little digging around their property and they were digging at one point and found the remains of a Columbian mammoth. And so they contacted Dr. Collins, who was at UT at the time, and uh, he came out and took a look at it and found that uh, it was a pretty significant site, and it's a pretty significant find at the site. So that's when uh, Dr. Collins got involved with the project. I'm Michael Collins. I'm a research professor at Texas State University in the Department of Anthropology. I'm also a research associate at the Texas Archaeological Research Laboratory at uh, University of Texas at Austin. I am president of a nonprofit organization called the Galt School of Archaeological Research that uh, is sort of the uh, operational arm of the Galt Archaeological Project. This site came to my attention when I was uh, at the University of Texas 
at Austin, and that was actually in the fall of 1990. And uh, a navigational archaeologist that was digging out here found some uh, small, smooth pebbles with engraving on them associated with Clovis Age artifacts. And this was an unprecedented find that uh, none of us had ever heard of before. At that time, this property was a pay-to-dig uh, locality. And uh, we managed to get permission to come out here and just visit it. This was, uh, when I say we, it was Professor Tom Hester at the University of Texas at Austin and myself came out, visited the site, and decided that it was an important enough site that we'd like to do some scientific work here. And so in the summer of 1991, we arranged to do two weeks of archaeological testing here with uh, students from UT Austin, which we did. And what we found told us that there was still an awful lot of important material to be found and awful lot of good information to be gleaned from this site. But we could not work with that landowner, and it was 1998 before we were back on this site, uh, when, the, when the site changed hands, actually. Well, in Texas archaeology, uh, the Galt site is the largest, in fact, this is North American archaeology, the largest Clovis site anywhere. It has the largest number of artifacts of, from the Clovis period. Um, and uh, one of the things that intrigues me about this place is that we have the Clovis levels, uh, we dug a lot down a little bit further and there's more stuff down there and we're trying to figure out what that stuff might be. It is one of the earlier archaeological sites to have been professionally excavated in the state of Texas. By, it was dug by J.E. Pierce in 1929 under the auspices of the anthropology department at the University of Texas, which is what it was at that time. And um, he demonstrated that it was one of the very largest and in terms of artifacts, one of the richest sites anywhere in Central Texas. Uh, no other professional archeologist that we know of was back on this site until 1988. And by 1988, it had become a pay to dig place. And it was, it, it looked like the proverbial World War I battlefield. It was, it was just virtually destroyed. And we assumed that it had no archaeological value left. So we were surprised in 1991 when we had the opportunity to test the site that it had a, a very extensive amount of early archaeological deposits that were still in place that had not been disturbed. Since 1998, uh, we put in uh, a number of years of intensive investigation of those early deposits here and they are contributing to a better understanding of the peopling of the Americas, the earliest peoples to be in the interior of North America. So the, the site's uh, continuing to make history. Clovis is a, uh, it's a technology uh, that's associated with people who were here uh, in North America, um, dated pretty pretty closely to uh, between 13,000 and 13,500 years ago, somewhere around there. Uh, and for, longest, for, for a very long time, they've been considered to be the oldest uh, occupation of North America. So they were, they were the first people to come over here, according to the, to the uh, research that was done in the past. And then uh, more recently, we found that there are a lot more, uh, there's more and more evidence that people were here earlier than the 13,500 year mark. Um, and it's not clear if that's just people who developed into Clovis or if it was different people or what's going on. And that's, that's one of the things that we're trying to figure out here is, is who are these people who are there where they shouldn't be. I, I started here in 2009. So we've been here, we've actually been here since 2007. Um, uh, this site has been dug quite a bit. Uh, there's a trench that actually is right behind here and there's a couple other trenches that go across the field here and there um, but they chose this site because um, they had put a, a, a one by one square meter uh, unit down as far as they could go at the time down to the water table 
uh, and they did encounter some of some flakes and stuff below uh, where the Clovis stuff was, had stopped. So there's the Clovis level, and then there's a, a little level that has very little in it uh, culturally, and then the flakes start picking up again. And so uh, Dr. Collins thought, well, you know, this might be something that, that is interesting to look at. So that's what we've done here. And we're finding the same thing. I mean, we're finding the Clovis level, uh, and then artifact uh, frequency drops off uh, below that for about 30 centimeters or so, and then it starts picking up again. Now, what did they find when they took that one meter by one meter section and just dug down as far as they could go? Well, I find this really remarkable. We look at people back that far as being just hunter-gatherers, paleo-Indians, which is a term I hate, but that's the term we give these people. And we look at arrowheads and other basic stuff. Well, what did they find when they dug down here? to the 13,000 year level and below? Well, let's take a listen. Uh, the single most interesting thing we have found is a, uh, a small area of the site where uh, there were, uh, we, we did a, an excavation block where we opened up an area and took it down. And we happened to come right down on an artificial stone pavement, a square, patch of gravel that's about seven feet by seven feet oriented by the cardinal directions and it had a very thin sparse layer of archaeological material on and around that floor. Archaeologists have a concept that we call the toss zone and Boy Scouts have toss zones, Australian Aborigines have toss zones uh, and what that is, if you've got a central area in a campsite and you generate trash, you just toss it off to one side or the other. And what you end up with is usually a kind of a clean area with arcs of trash around them. There are two toss zones, two arcs of trash around that stone pavement. One of them is uh, small chips of uh, flint or chert, the result of stone tool manufacture. And they are on the north, northeast, and east side of that stone pavement. And on the west, southwest, and south side of it are uh, bones of large animals. A lot of them couldn't be identified, but the few that could be were uh, bison or buffalo bones. We found just a very small number of kind of nondescript stone tools on that surface. And we interpreted those tools as belonging to Clovis culture of about 13,000 years ago. But we've recently gotten back some dating results that suggest that that stone floor may be 15 or more thousand years old, quite a lot earlier than Clovis. So we are currently in the process of much more intensively dating samples that will help pin down the age of that. And if it does prove to be as old as we think it is, uh, that will be the first really large intact human feature found in the Western Hemisphere uh, that, uh, that's older than Clovis. So they found a stone floor perfectly aligned to the cardinal points down around the 13,000 to 15,000 year level. Really? I think this story deserves to be told a little more. They also found mammoth bones. This is a young mammoth jawbone they found at the site. But I found it very interesting how they said there was a layer of Clovis and then nothing and then pre-Clovis or a first Clovis layer, does that have anything to do with the events that happened around that time period that Randall Carlson have talked about and Robert Schock that they have suggested happened at that time period? Well, I find that layering of the artifacts and the evidence of human habitation very, very interesting at this site. Now those video clips are kind of old. But remarkably, I've been looking at this story for about two weeks now, and this story just came out yesterday. 
It says, at the Galt Archaeological Site in Central Texas, archaeologists have unearthed a projectile point technology never previously seen in North America, which they date to be 16,000 to 20,000 years old. The findings published in the journal of Science Advances suggest humans occupied the North American continent prior to the Clovis, considered the first culture to use projectile points to hunt on the continent, and dated it to around 11,000 years ago. And here are some of the artifacts here, and not just arrowheads or projectile points. There were some other artifacts here that were found. And it says, for, for decades, scientists believe the Western Hemisphere was settled by humans roughly 13,500 years ago, a theory based largely upon the widespread distribution of Clovis artifacts dated to that time. But in the recent years, archaeological evidence has increasingly called into question the idea of Clovis first. It says, now Texas State University researcher Thomas Williams and colleagues working at the Galt site northwest of Austin has dated a significant assemblage, assemblage of stone artifacts to 16,000 to 20,000 years of age, pushing back the timeline of the first human habitations of North America far beyond the Clovis. Well, I find this all to be very remarkable. Sometimes we look back six, 7,000 years in America and say, wow, that's really super old. For the ancient United States. Well, we're talking time periods here that are as old as some of the oldest sites on earth. We have one right here in Texas. I did not know a lot about this. I've been looking at this for now uh, maybe a couple weeks. I find this fascinating. I will leave a whole bunch of links below. But that is the history of the Galt site. Seems a long, long time ago. They would have had everything they needed for human habitation water, stone, tool making materials, megafauna, food to eat, but this is a pretty remarkable site. There is a 13,000 year old stone floor aligned to the cardinal points, and even more remarkable, there is human habitation maybe going back 5,000 years before that. This really re rewrites the story of ancient America, and this fits perfectly in with my series. Ancient America is pretty cool. Hope you thought this was interesting. You all have a very nice day.